Free Rain Beyond the Journey's End is an absolutely fantastic anime. In fact, it's so good, this will be the second time I'm talking about it on this channel this week. Now, I don't usually cover anime on the channel, but when I see something really good, I like to talk about it. However, tonight, it's going to be about this bigger concept that I've been wanting to talk about in relation to authors, writers, and fans out there, and something a little bit deeper. So, if you guys like this conversation, it would be absolutely awesome if you would like this video subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell and although i don't have some fancy animation for it like you just saw it would be awesome if you guys actually share this video to your favorite social media platform or your favorite discord or your favorite gilded or wherever you are allowed to share this link because i think this is really important to talk about so there is a lot of chatter going on right now with Freerin uh, Beyond the Journey's End, as I believe the first season is coming to a close. Um, I'm not fully caught up all the way to the end. And one of the things that I've seen a few times now from people over on Twix or Twitter, X, formerly known, I call it Twix. It's yeah, it's just Twix now. But I've seen this a few times at this point, and this really worries me. And here's the problem is I've actually seen this with other properties before. There are people right now crying racism, saying that Freerun actually has racist nodes because the demons in the show, it's racist to make them just born evil because you can't do that in modern writing. You can't make a race of people or one group of a thing objectively evil and that's the racism. And we're gonna attack this in a lot of different ways, but let's pull up the tweet here real quick. This is the one that I saw today. It says, but it is a racism. Full stop. It is not, there is nothing in this show that is. Uh, and it's boring. <clears throat> a, uh, a person slash people just born evil. Full stop, they're not born evil. They actually just come into existence. If you watch the show, they don't even know the concept of like mothers and fathers. So you can see the rest of the tweet here and you guys can read it on screen. I'll leave it up for a second, but let me get into my point here. When it comes to the idea of demons specifically, okay, if you actually go and you look into the etymology of the word, where it came from, and so on and so forth, it actually started in Greek, okay? Demon, daemon, okay? In the Greek was actually a spirit that could be malevolent or benevolent. It was just a spirit that could actually change your choices or affect your choices as a human being. Now, as it went on, the term changed once it jumped languages a couple of times, and we have known demons to be malevolent spirits or malevolent beings that are out to cause harm to one's soul or their purpose in life. Now, if you actually look at a lot of modern things in society, demons are often represented as these grotesque things, these things that are very evil I mean, Devil May Cry is one of my favorite things ever. You look at the demons there, those guys are definitely evil, right? So why is it that those demons are objectively evil and the and it's not racist to call those demons evil, but these ones are? Well, one, I think, is because in Free Rain, they draw some of the demons to look pretty, okay? So pretty must equal good. That's just how people have done it. However, most guys out there know that the most evil things on the planet can be pretty. You know what I'm talking about. Going further into this, understanding the etymology of the word, where it comes from, how it's changed, how the lexicon works around it, and how demon is colloquially used. If you actually ask somebody on the street, hey, what do you think of when you think of a demon? Most people are not going to say, I think of a fantasy character from a tabletop RPG style setting, which, because again, that's where most of this comes from. It's all very D&D inspired. Most, in fact, modern fantasy anime is very D&D inspired, at least the ones that I've seen. Most are not going to associate it with that. They're going to associate it with the malevolent, with the, I'm sorry, the, mal <laughs> the malevolent creatures, not the benevolent, Boy, I'm getting tongue-tied. They're going to associate it with evil, an evil spirit, something that's out there to attack you, something that's out there to do harm to humanity, something that is objectively evil. Now, in Freerend, you know, beyond the journey's end, you see these demons. They are objectively evil. They announce that they are objectively evil. They announce that they want to harm humanity. They announce that they want to kill humanity. They want to rule over. They want power for the sake of power, and that is what they are obsessed with from the moment that they come into existence. Now, I don't know if they say that they're born or not born. I believe that they say that they just come into existence. They're not exactly, they don't even know the concept of mothers and fathers, right? They don't have familial bonds. They are stripped of humanity because they are not human. 
Now, the reason I have such a big issue with this is the creator obviously meant for these creatures to be objectively evil. Why are they evil? Because in this world, these are the malevolent creatures that are out there to harm the good, right? The, the, the great struggle between good and evil. That's what most stories are told. The struggle between good and evil. Whether it's, I've seen some people want to read stories and create stories about mental health. Well, the struggle there is the good that you want to be as a person and the evil, this, this mental plague that's plaguing you, keeping you down, right? The struggle between good and evil is massive, and it always has been, and it means something to us. To sit there and say that this is racist is one thing that really bothers me because it robs the author of their intention. Now, what do, you, what do I mean by this? Well, over the course of years, you've heard it many times, whether it's music or television show or this, that, and the other thing. Sometimes an artist of any, of any medium will get asked a question. Well, this scene, what exactly does it mean? They're like, well, you know, it's just, it's just like up to interpretation, bro. It's just like whatever you feel. That is absolute crap. Authors, artists, and everybody in and around the creative medium needs to intend what their stories are for and make sure that the audience understands that intention. Now, I do believe that modern audiences have gotten so accustomed to just injecting whatever they want into an author's meaningful story, and they're trying to strip the meaningfulness, the meaning out of it, most likely because they want to have some sort of meaning in their lives. This right here robs people of the intention to tell their own stories. By injecting the very notion of something as horrible as racism into this show, by trying to convince other people that it is in fact that, you are in fact going and robbing the intention and trying to mutilate the intention of the author and the artist. You see, intention is everything that we live in, right? The intention to get through your day, the intention to accomplish a task, and then actually pushing yourself and motivating yourself to go through those tasks. Once you, as a watcher, a viewer, a reader, a listener, decide to inject your own intention into an author or artist's work, you yourself are committing theft at one of the most high levels that I personally think you can. And that is by stealing away the original thought and the original meaning, perverting it, and then trying to present it to the world in a way that the author never intended. This has been going on for decades. This is something that I have thought about many, many times. It's because I've been seeing people say this, and it has always bothered me, especially being a musician. I used to follow a lot of musicians, and a lot of them would come out and they would say, oh no, it's absolutely for this. And they're like, well, some fans say it's this. And the author, completely in absolute buffoonery will say, well, you know, if some people read it that way, I guess they can. No. For all the authors out there, heed this call. When you write something and you intend for it, never, ever let anybody change your intention. Never let them change their words. Never let them be allowed to use an alternate definition to what you meant in that story. For everyone out there reading these stories, your input is 100% utterly meaningless. It is, I'm sorry, it is. Now you can say that the story is either good or bad, right? But to sit there and tell an author that their intention, that their meaning that they put behind us, that some that you are trying to say, no, 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 you're actually racist and you don't understand. They say, no, I'm actually not. I wrote a fantasy story with creatures that come to being and they are literally just the evil creatures in the world, right? Again, nobody says that it's racist to call a gnarly looking demon evil when they look really gnarly, but all of a sudden you make them pretty? Well, I guess pretty privilege does exist. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about this rant. This is something that I've been thinking about for a good chunk of the day and actually something in relation to free run that is, but I've actually been thinking about this topic for many, many years now. Intention. It's massively important. And never let somebody steal that from you. Don't let them change it. Don't let them think it's okay to change it. They want to fill their meaningless lives with something meaningful by trying to co-opt and pervert something. Maybe if they go create their own thing, they'll stop perverting yours, but one can only hope. So, 
If you guys are here and you made it to the end, thank you all so much. And do me a massive favor. Go and comment down below your thoughts on this. The reason that I say that is because I make a point to read every comment that I get on my uh, videos and my live streams throughout the week on Sundays. It's called Sunday Coffee. I do it live. I don't just tell you I read all your comments. I actually read them live on Sunday. And you can jump in the chat and you can tell me right there, I'm an idiot or you like what I had to say. So please join me on Sundays at 11 a.m. Central. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. And I would ask, beg, borrow, and steal just to get you guys to click the links down in the description below to join my Gilded server and my drinkwithcrazy.locals.com. Oh, and by the way, just in case you guys didn't know, I'm also over on Rumble as well. So click that link while you're down there. See you next time.